All right, you guys should be hearing me now. Okay, so one of the things that I wish Ableton would have done when it comes to slicing in MIDI, or slicing in, um, sorry, samples, is in the manual mode of simpler, you can, when you select here to manual, you can go in and add slices like literally by clicking but that can be quite annoying because maybe you don't want to just find manually and click them in but you want to be able to lazy chop so i know if you have push two or push three you can do all this but without this tool i'm about to show you you can't do it so there is no other options really um, and I still don't get why Ableton hasn't just put that in to their system. I mean, we're at the point now where lazy chop is kind of common, so it should be something in there that allows you to do it. Not that I would use it all the time, but it's nice to have the option. So this AZ dash labs created a nice tool that actually happens to be free. And this is it right here. And you'll see if you go to az-labs.com downloads slash simpler, and you guys can see the rest of it here. I'm not going to read it to you. That you can grab this for zero. This is euro, but technically it's just zero dollars. Okay. And this is a pad slicing mode that allows you, at least if you have live 9.5 or greater, to be able to lazy chop or a slice with your QWERTY keyboard, which is huge. And you could use any other controllers with this too. So this is really a nice feature to have. And I think it's one of the ones, if you are using Ableton, this is a must grab if you have the Max for Live. If you don't have Max for Live, I don't think this will work. I think it requires that. But you can see here, yeah, see Ableton Suite or a separate Max for Live license. So you need at least that. And um, it's incredible. So let's use it. So here's a sample. Uh, hold on, let's see, let me go back. Here, here's a sample. And so you see it's running in manual mode. Then if I hit the next key, it doesn't do anything. Because, of course, you can't see me hitting the key. But once I take this little guy here, the pad slicing mode, and put it after the simpler and then turn on pad slicing, now when I hit it and watch this, I can hit different notes. Watch. That was a bad one. And if you mess up, so let's say is this note I actually want it to be. Oops. If you mess up, just go into it, double click on it to get rid of it. So then wherever your last one that you played, you can start it there. Oops, messed up again. One way to do this to fix this too, if you mess up, is just Command Z will undo the last thing you did and then go back in. So now you can play it across your QWERTY. hit my little stand there okay don't get too involved right and you mess it up so trigger is one shot and gate means it plays as long as I hold it so it 
So there you go. This is, I'm not the greatest at sampling and chopping, but my goodness, this increase, this little guy here should be implemented into the uh, chop modes that you can use any controller versus using just the push three or the push two or um, that's pretty much what they have it set as. So using the QWERTY is so much better because a lot of times I don't have a controller and I want to be able to just do it with what I have here. Now, when I get the Topo T16, which is basically 16 pads, well, they're technically keys, um, then I'll use that as my controller. And that's where this will come in handy too. Uh, but you can use the MPC if you have one. Now, some people might think, why would I use an MPC? I could just chop in the MPC. Very true. But let's say you love Ableton and you like your MPC and sometimes you wanna use them together. Now you can. So the options are there, up to you how you choose to um, chop it up. Boom, 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 no. <laughs> But however you uh, get down when you make music, this is just an added bonus to your workflow. So you need this to be able to do it this way. Otherwise, you'll be punching in man, literally manually, manually uh, clicking in your spots, which is fine. But if you want to do it on time and base, having that. Now, the way I've done it, because I didn't care for the chopping in simpler at first. Um, but the goal here is obviously to keep using Ableton devices so that you don't have to uh, go buy another device, especially if you can get something for free, is using a Serato Sampler. And Serato Sampler, if you throw it in, I guess if it ever decides to set up a MIDI track, Hold on, let me do it this way. Oh, because I'm trying to, <laughs> I wasn't throwing the actual AU in. My bad. Okay, give it a second here. And the seconds turn into a minute. The patience that we have these days is so far gone. Uh, we're still working and work in progress, right? All right, let's go in here. Oops, that's drums. So here's that same sample. So I would throw it in and then I would either go, you can go set random, set slicer, or find samples. So I would just do find samples a lot of times. And you can see it puts the keys down here, the number. which works great. You can use your QWERTY keyboard or you can use a regular keyboard if you want to play these notes. So that's how I was doing it. But it's nice to know that even though I don't have the push two or three, that I could actually just do it with the QWERTY keyboard right in the device and be good. I mean, that that's a beautiful thing. So there you have it. And uh, yeah, check out AZ-Labs. I'm not paid to show you this. Obviously, this is a free device. And uh, that's one of the beauties of Ableton Suite and having Max for Live is that you have all these little gadgets and tools that people make. And they can give you all these added features to Ableton to make your workflow enhanced. All right. So hopefully everyone's doing well. Stay safe. Until the next one, I'm out.